Pregnancy is a universal experience, but the way it was experienced in ancient Egypt was quite different from the way it is experienced today. Thanks to the work of archaeologists, we have a better understanding of what pregnancy was like for ancient Egyptian women. Welcome back to Crunch. Let's find out what archaeologists discovered about pregnancy in Egypt. How did ancient Egyptians determine pregnancy? One of the earliest known pregnancy tests was developed in ancient Egypt. This test involved urinating on barley or wheat seeds and observing whether or not they germinated. If the seeds germinated, it was believed that the woman was pregnant. This test was not always accurate, but it was one of the earliest attempts to determine pregnancy. The ancient Egyptians believed that the goddess Isis was the protector of pregnant women and that she would help them to have a safe and healthy delivery. They also believed that the fetus was a sacred being and that it should be treated with respect. The ancient Egyptian pregnancy test was described in a medical text called the Ebers Papyrus, which was written around 1550 BC. The papyrus contains a variety of medical recipes and treatments, including the following instructions for determining pregnancy. If you wish to know if a woman is pregnant, take three grains of barley and three grains of wheat and let her urinate on them. If the barley sprouts, she will bear a male child. If the wheat sprouts, she will bear a female child. But if neither sprouts, she will not bear a child. The ancient Egyptian pregnancy test was not always accurate. For example, if the woman had recently had intercourse, the barley or wheat seeds might germinate even if she was not pregnant. The accuracy of the test depended on a number of factors, including the woman's stage of pregnancy, the temperature of the environment, and the quality of the seeds. However, the test was still one of the earliest attempts to determine pregnancy, and it is a testament to the ingenuity of the ancient Egyptians. In addition to the pregnancy test described in the Ebers Papyrus, there are other references to pregnancy in ancient Egyptian medical texts. For example, one text describes a treatment for morning sickness, and another text describes a way to induce labor. These texts provide us with a glimpse into the medical knowledge of the ancient Egyptians and their understanding of pregnancy. What did ancient Egyptian women do during pregnancy? There is no one answer to this question, as the experiences of ancient Egyptian women would have varied depending on their social status and location. However, we do know that some ancient Egyptian women followed certain practices during pregnancy. For example, they might have worn amulets or charms to protect themselves and their unborn child. They might also have eaten certain foods that were believed to be beneficial for pregnancy, such as dates and pomegranates. What happened during childbirth? Childbirth in ancient Egypt was a dangerous event. The average life expectancy for women in ancient Egypt was around 30 years, and many women passed away in childbirth. However, there were some steps that could be taken to improve the chances of a safe delivery. For example, women might have been attended by midwives, who could provide assistance during labor and delivery. What happened after the birth? After the birth of a child, the mother would have been given a period of time to rest and recover. She might have been attended by a wet nurse, who would have nursed the child. The child would have been welcomed into the family and would have been given a name. Was there an option for contraception? The Ebers Papyrus, one of the oldest medical documents in the world, describes a number of methods of contraception that were used in ancient Egypt. These methods included plant-based contraceptives. Some plants, such as acacia gum, were believed to have contraceptive properties. These plants would be inserted into the female body to prevent spermatozoa from reaching the egg. Reversible Barrier Methods a pessary made of crocodile dung or acacia gum was also used as a barrier method of contraception. This pessary would be inserted into the female body to block spermatozoa from reaching the egg. Lactational amenorrhea Lactational amenorrhea is a natural form of contraception that occurs when a woman is breastfeeding. During lactation, the body releases hormones that suppress ovulation. This means that a woman who is breastfeeding is less likely to become pregnant. It's important to note that these methods of contraception were not always effective. However, they were the best methods available at the time. 
The use of contraception in ancient Egypt was not widespread. It was mostly used by women who did not want to have more children or who were concerned about the health risks of pregnancy. However, the use of contraception did increase in later periods of Egyptian history. The Role of a Man in Ancient Egypt The role of a man when his wife was pregnant in ancient Egypt varied depending on his social status and wealth. However, there were some general expectations that were placed on men during this time. Providing for his wife The man was expected to provide for his wife's physical and emotional needs during pregnancy. This included providing her with food, clothing, and a safe place to live. He was also expected to be supportive and understanding during this time. Attending to medical care If his wife needed medical care, the man was expected to provide it or to arrange for her to receive it. This could include consulting with a doctor or midwife or providing her with herbal remedies. Protecting his wife the man was expected to protect his wife from harm during pregnancy. This included protecting her from physical harm as well as from emotional stress. He was also expected to provide her with emotional support. In addition to these general expectations, there were some specific roles that men might play during pregnancy. For example, a wealthy man might hire a midwife to attend to his wife during childbirth. A less wealthy man might attend to his wife himself or he might rely on the help of family members or friends. Here are some examples of how men in ancient Egypt fulfilled their roles during pregnancy. Pharaoh Akhenaten Akhenaten was the pharaoh of Egypt during the 18th dynasty. He was married to Nefertiti, who was one of the most famous queens in Egyptian history. When Nefertiti was pregnant, Akhenaten took a great interest in her health and well-being. He consulted with doctors and midwives, and he provided her with the best medical care available. Commoner A commoner in ancient Egypt might not have had the same access to medical care as a pharaoh. However, he would still be expected to provide for his wife's physical and emotional needs during pregnancy. What we still don't know Despite the work of archaeologists, there is still much that we don't know about pregnancy in ancient Egypt. For example, we don't know exactly what the pregnancy diet was like or what kind of medical care was available to pregnant women. However, the work of archaeologists is helping us to piece together the story of pregnancy in ancient Egypt and to gain a better understanding of this important part of human history. In conclusion, the work of archaeologists has given us a glimpse into the world of pregnancy in ancient Egypt. We have learned about the ways in which ancient Egyptian women determined pregnancy the beliefs they held about pregnancy, and the practices they followed during pregnancy and childbirth. Thank you for watching Crunch. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.